everybody, this is Angelo Quinones and you reach Shine Ministries. Shine Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. And I and I heard, and I'm borrowing, it is designed from actually a Star Trek episode. And I forgot, I don't think I ever knew the title, but I forgot um, the title if I knew it. And so it was about, um, you know, uh, Kirk, Bones, and Spack. They being down to this planet's surface, and they actually imitated the Romans. You know, the Roman way of thinking, of doing things, whatever the case may be. And they even had uh, uh, the, the sun, the sun, the sun, but not S-U-N. It actually was revealed in the end of the program as the Son of God, S-O-N. And so they were mimicking. Uh, probably, you know, there were you know, people who interfered interfered with the planet and actually spread that around about the Roman way of doing things and stuff like that. And actually, um, actually, uh, one of the commanders uh, of the Starfleet actually, you know, uh, did that, and, and actually he died in the end. But <clears throat> so he interfered. The, the, you know, the, the, he uh, disobeyed the prime directive uh, of non-interference, you know. But we're going to interfere with the witnesses because they are actually interfering with the text of Scripture, actually twisting them um, to their own destruction. And so we're, we're looking at the full Greek construction, okay, of uh, John chapter 14, verse 28, post by e. Post by e means, like, what's happening? What's up? Like, you know, how's it going? Like that, you know, in, in modern Greek. And you have you also... Um, Yasas, Yasas uh, means hello formally. Like if you don't know somebody, you know what I mean. Just met somebody. Yasas, and Yasu, actually, it sounds like Jesus, but it's not. Yasu, actually, um, that means hello to your old buddies and pals because that's what they deserve. Okay, the secondary one. You know what I'm saying? What I mean? <clears throat> so that's a you know, and um, and uh, and that's just it. you say in, in Hebrew says shalom. Uh, Shalom, Ani, uh, whatever, Angelo, uh, uh, hello, my name is Angelo, if you want to say hello, you just say, you know, just say Shalom, just, just say like that, you know, Shalom, Shalom Alechem, and then they'll say Alechem Shalom, you know, all that stuff, they reverse the process, now, um, I already said in this text, okay, that he already equates himself to God at least twice here in the text, and that's just at least twice, I'm being generous to the witnesses, okay, not slapping them around a little bit, you know. But let's get to the prime directive over here. Talking about prime directives. You know is that what I'm saying? And the other saying, you know, is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers. And that's just really uh, describing the ministry in a nutshell. I am Ministries has to do with Jesus, not anybody else also. You know, I was accused by a King James only, you know, advocate as another cult and sect, you know, of saying, oh, why are you calling yourself I am? You know, I, Jesus is I am. I know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I know that. That's why I called it I am ministries because Jesus said ego ami at least nine times in his book in seven verses. Now, let's check this out. It says over here. And uh, may God please, you know, bless the, the reading of his uh, word and the study of his word. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you, glorifying your holy, your holy name, because it is great. You are great. And I just pray that you will uh, cleanse my sins away by the blood of Jesus, that I could study this in tremendous power and boldness and accuracy. Because I want to be accurate to your people, Lord, and to people who are not your people yet, who will be a, your people. So I just pray uh, that you receive my thanksgiving for all things, for the food I just received, um, for the roof over my head, for for a beautiful wife, a beautiful baby, uh, and uh, stepkids, and 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 just for uh, the two families. And uh, we're going through difficult times now, uh, Father, with the baby. So I just pray that you protect her and let her grow up to be a um, wonderful uh, Christian woman at a ripe old age. And I just pray that you protect our relationship now as, we, as we're struggling now. And so I just pray in Jesus' name that um, that you will do these things. Um, and I just thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, we just almost lost our baby, uh, you know, three times. Uh, she stopped breathing three times. So, I mean, of course, we took her to the hospital. We need to take her to, um, you know, a special hospital that would do a... a, a um, her name is Anna Devane, by the way. Uh, I got that name from General Hospital because I'm a big 
Anna Devine, I hate to say fan, but you know what I mean, admirer, I'll say it like that as a Christian person, you know, along with Sean Donnelly and Robert Scorpio, I love those dudes as well, I can't see calling my child Frisco, Frisco Jones, I just, just, I can't, it doesn't roll on the tongue, you know what I'm saying, but let's get back to this, it says over here, um, and the baby's fine, by the way, the baby's fine, uh, she's breathing, she just had milk, um, and she's being fed. Uh, she's going to be fed later. And so, I mean, she's it's, it's a hard time that we're going through now. Now I know what it is to, 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 through, you know, to go through a marriage that's tough sometimes. It's a wonderful marriage, but it's really tough. So if you're single, just stay single. Just <laughs> praise God that you're single. I think that 1 Corinthians chapter 7 really comes alive when you get married, though. You know, it should come alive before. It is, of course. The, the, the Word of God is, you know, uh, living and powerful. I understand that. Um, chapter 4, I believe, of, of Hebrews. But, I mean, you, you really... Just to say the marriage side of things that the Apostle Paul speaks about, you really, you really experience it. Um, that's why it's really good to teach about marriage when you're married. I never thought that. I thought that you can teach it um, when you're, you know, not married. But, man, you don't know nothing that's going on <laughs> until you get married, though. You really don't. You really don't. It's like it's like heaven sometimes, and it's like hellfire and dodge. It really is. It really is. Take it from me, and that's why, you know, you know, you know I spare you, says the Apostle Paul. <laughs> the problems that you're going to have, you know. But anyway, we're talking, about, we're talking about this, so let's get back to the issue. The issue is verse 28 of chapter 14. And let's quote it. Quote from the NASB, which is a dependable Bible, one of the greatest Bible ever written, and a formal equivalent translation of the Bible, a sort of word for word translation of the Bible when it can be. You know what I mean? Well, it says something like this it says, You heard, so Jesus is speaking now, okay, to the disciples. So that's, that's going to be in the plural in the Greek, you know? And second person, personal pronoun from the plural part of the paradigm. You heard that I said to you, I go away and I will come to you. Now, if you love me, says Jesus, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. Now, I, uh, let me just clean my magnifying glass. Okay. <laughs> That's this deal, because I am legally blind, and so I need magnifying glasses to read the screen of the phone. Anything that's on the screen of the phone, I need, you know, a very special magnifying glass, you know, to read. So if I read a little bit slow, please, I apologize for that, and, and, and show a little bit of mercy. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, um, <clears throat> I almost woke up my stepson, and he's still sleeping. And he has his food on the table over there, you know, in a, in a special container. Now, um... So this is the deal. It, it's just, first of all, you have to understand this, that he already equated himself to God. You understand what I'm saying? It says in verse 1, it says something like this. You can tell the witnesses. Just don't, don't stay with the verse that they're throwing. You have to go to the surrounding context and the verse. Okay, just don't stay with the verse. Because there are riches to be found, uh, other riches, that are to be found elsewhere in the chapter. Remember, there's 31 verses here. Okay, remember that, that, that I reminded you that the word father, pater, and its, men, and its uh, various forms and inflections, you know, I mean, is found at least 23 times. I was counting in a Greek text, 23 times. Now, I saw some uh, pronouns, and it could have been up to 25 or 26 times, something like that. But, uh, you, know, it's, 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 you know, the word father is found 20 times here. So you could tell the witnesses that really the greater has to do, the greater... Uh, the adjective greater, the positive degree. You remember that I told you uh, 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 yesterday that there are three degrees of adjectives that we're talking about. Okay, when well, we're talking about uh, Greek, we're talking about the positive degree, we're talking about the um, the comparative degree and the superlative degree. Okay, and the positive degree is great. The comparative degree is greater when you're comparing uh, uh, yourself to another person or a person to a person, and then. Um, with a person, I guess. And then um, the third one is a superlative degree, more than two. Okay? That's how I was taught it. So um, you have, uh, and that's greatest. So you have great, greater, and greatest. This is the comparative, greater. Okay? The comparative degree. 
Okay. So here, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the, the word father is found 23 times. So the focus is on the father-son relationship. Okay, this is the Greek P that I'm spitting out there. And not the Theos Logos relationship. That is not being compared here. Okay, when he's when he used uh, the word greater, mezon or my zone or mezon. I don't know. I don't care how you pronounce the the, the the diphthon there, the combination of two vowels. It's like in the in the word eight. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. E I is is one sound, right? So we have that in Greek. You know, epsilon iota, epsilon upsilon. Uh, Omicron Yoda or OI, you know, if you will, anyway. Uh, alpha Yoda or AI, that makes one sound. I mean, sometimes um, it doesn't, but you just have to look at the uh, the uruses, the, the two little dots above it to see. It's particularly in the name to see if it's broken up like that, you know. And, and then you just, you don't you don't have a, a sort of a diphthong like that, that that makes one sound. You have to, you know, say, uh, uh, or whatever the case may be, you know what I mean? All right, so I think like Moises is like that. Mo, Mo E says, I have to look at that. I think Moises has that, uh, the Eurus' marker, but I don't have that in front of me now. <clears throat> All right, so uh, in, other, in other words, of course, it's not only Moses, you know, Moshe in the Hebrew. Now, so, I mean, it's concentrating, okay, I, I'm going to put it like this. Now, remember, Jesus is speaking to the disciples. They already are having trouble uh, when he said, I go away, and, 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 and they don't even know the way. Thomas says, show us the way. Now, Thomas was a doubting Thomas. Oh, Thomas. Ah. But he, initi he, not initiated, but he prompted Jesus to say at least two of the greatest verses in the Bible. Okay, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, it's right here. Okay. Uh, hadas, a feminine word, and uh, it's tricky, but you have to see, you know, the, the article right in front of it. It's, it's this feminine uh, article. So, hey, Hadas, you understand what I'm saying? And then, you know, uh, Aletheas, and, you know, and then uh, Zoe, and that's feminine. And, and so he prompted a, one of, I mean, probably the second greatest verse in the whole of the Bible. I mean, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except Dia through me. Said Jesus, I mean, you know, that I mean Thomas is, is responsible for verse twenty-eight. You understand what I'm saying? Of um of uh well he didn't prompt that, but he was actually prompted by Jesus to say that though. But so I'll take that back in verse twenty eight of this book of chapter twenty, you understand what I'm saying? Incidentally, when you see that he was a life giving spirit, okay, in the Bible, well just look at you know, uh I believe verse twenty two of chapter twenty of this book, uh, John, Gospel Kata Yohanne, and you're gonna see that he breathed into the disciples, okay, the breath of life, the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, um so he was a life giving spirit in that sense. Okay? It's not that he was given life. And he became a spirit. Now, now, look at verse 22. Tell the witnesses of chapter 20. And you're going to see the life-giving spirit deal. Now. So, this is focusing on, and this is a little tricky. Because um, he is one person. And the natures, okay, are, are you know, are um, the, the two natures, okay, is Jesus. Lagas and uh, Anthropos. You know, the anthropos, not the anthropic, though. Like I said before yesterday, it's not the blending of the nature, it's the anthropic. I'm not talking about that. But the anthropos, there's a big difference. The anthropos, the God man. You know what I'm saying? That he has nature, I like to say, uh, delineated in this way nature A and nature B. Don't say nature A or nature uh, B. Don't say or. Say nature A and, A and D, B. Nature 1 and nature too now if you say like uh nature a or nature one then you're then you're okay he's he can't explain to him then uh, them because it's, it's in the plural you know uh, homie and stuff like that his natures you know the, my father is greater than i according to you know um the nature of the father and my secondary nature which i took you know, after you know, in the, uh, during the incarnation, I mean, he, he's he, they're having trouble enough as it is. Where will you go? Let us know the way. You know, show us the Father. <laughs> Didn't even know that he already saw the uh, they already saw the Father in him. 
You see? Hara'o is the Greek word there. Uh, twice is found in that text, or verse, uh, around verse 9 or something like that. Look, look at it. They're having trouble enough as it is. Okay? These disciples were in the school of Christ, okay, for, for several years, for three and a half years, and he still didn't get some stuff. So he's going to, you know, you know, um, you know, spill out the natures, you know, to them like that. And, you know, just before he's crucified, he's not going to do that. He's going to let the Apostle Paul do that, you know. You understand what I'm saying? Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Okay, huparkon and labon. Two different participles, subsisting and taking. You see, he's going to do that through the Apostle Paul, not not there in front of their face. It, 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 he didn't uh, um, he didn't even breathe into them the Holy Spirit yet. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. That's the verse that I spoke to you about, verse twenty two of chapter twenty of this of this book. He didn't even do that yet. He's not going to explain those. I mean, if you if you do not believe, um, you know, if you don't, don't understand, you know, the, the earthly things, how can you know? How can you believe? You know, if I, I tell you of, of heavenly things, uh, something, something he uh, told Nicodemus. Well, it's the same thing for the apostles. They didn't receive the Holy Spirit yet. They, wasn't, they weren't even filled with the Holy Spirit. They were not baptized yet with the Holy Spirit, and they weren't even filled. So <laughs> it would be hard to explain to them nature A and nature B and nature, you know, or, okay, uh, nature um, uh, 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 1 and nature 2. It, it's impossible. So, oh, why didn't he say that there was? It's a doll. I mean, everybody went after the crucifixion to their own home. I mean, scattered all over the giant, and they left it at the garden. Peter denied them. I mean, he's not going to explain them. Nature one, nature two. You know, this is, this is you know, for the time fa fails me, it says an apostle, an apostle, I think in Hebrews, you know. We're not allowed to say that now, you know, but we cannot speak on these things now about the tabernacle, the fullness and the glory of the tabernacle, chapter 9 of Hebrews. It's the same thing that's going on with Jesus. He's not going to, you know, spend like, first of all, he doesn't have the time to give a, 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 a you know, a two-hour lecture on nature one and nature <laughs> and, and nature uh, uh, two. He, he doesn't have the time for that. You understand what I'm saying? All right. So this, this, const this, this is what I'm trying to say. The Father has one nature, even though in the past he had a, a secondary nature, but it wasn't a continuous nature. It was a temporary nature as he dwelt in the body, um, one of the men who visited Abraham. I mean, that's, that's obvious, obvious, okay? And so that's just the, and so that was a theophany. So sometimes he made, he made theophanies, but that, that was just for a moment's space and time. That wasn't a continuous body, says uh, Norman Geisler. You know, like a continuous body. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's just the deal. So the thing is that, but Jesus has um, a continuous uh, second nature. So now he has two natures. I already spit them out. Nature one and nature two, or nature uh, A and nature B. So the thing is that it says in the book of Kings that God is greater than man. So that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the, with the whole person. But you have to, when you get into, you know, under the accidents, if you will, to borrow a Catholic analogy. <laughs> no, not, not a Catholic. Not a Catholic at all. I'm an evangelical born-again Christian. I am by, what I am by the grace of God, First Corinthians chapter 15. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a borrow anyway. It's just under the, you know, all of these, um, uh, and it was just, an, just, I'll take that back because it just wasn't an appearance. So I'll just take that back. But underneath, okay, you know, um, and I'm not going to say even underneath. Well, well, you can because there's bones underneath, so I'll stick it. I'll, 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 I'll stick that on the, on the blackboard. Underneath, okay, uh, or in the body of Jesus, okay, well, two natures, Okay, nature one and nature two, and the greater has to do with the father's, the father's nature being greater than the second nature of Jesus. Even though you can't separate uh, uh, nature A and nature B of Jesus to make them two persons. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You can't separate the natures, and that and you can you can delineate the natures, you can separate them. Because they're different, but you can't you can't make two persons out of it. So when you're talking about one nature, you're talking about the whole the whole being now. 
Okay? Unless the disciples, again, won't understand. But we understand because we have Philippians chapter 2, and verses 6 and 7. And also, he who was rich became poor for your sake. So through his poverty, you may become rich. And that's uh, verse 9, chapter 8 of, first, of what, 2 Corinthians, right? You have that. You have, um, you know, he was the root and offspring of Jesse. You have nature 1 and nature 2 right there. The root, that's the creator of Jesse. And the offspring, the genos, that is, the, that is um, well, the root and uh, the offspring is genos. And that's just the nature, uh, nature B. He took seed of the, uh, of the, uh, um, you know, of, uh, um, he took a hold of that uh, seed. It says in uh, verse 3, I believe, of, of chapter 1 of Romans. You understand what I'm saying? That's a spermatos, there's a Greek word there. Okay, uh, that's in the genitive case construction. Seed. You understand? That's in the, that's in the, uh, this, uh, this in the, this in the singular. It's not own, so that's in the singular. Okay, it's not seeds. It's seed. You understand what I'm saying? But let me see if it was um, David or Abraham there. But I think it was uh, David though. But let's let's check that out, and then we'll get back to that because I think there's the seed of David, of course, according to the flesh. But let's check it out though. It has to be the seed of David. But let's see. Uh, and, and that's explaining, uh, you know, I'm giving you verses where, I mean, it's talking about nature one and nature two. Okay, Revelation chapter what? Chapter uh, chapter 22, verse 16. It talks about that. So let's look at them. Okay, because we're looking, we're looking at something different today. All right, so let's look at them there. Romans chapter one. Okay, Romans chapter one and verse three. Let's check it out. It says over here, uh, concerning concerning his son who was uh, born of a uh, of a descendant of David, according okay to the flesh. Okay, and I think another translation says he was made of the seed of David, David according to the flesh. Okay. So this is uh, nature. This is nature uh, 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 B, or nature two. So he has two natures. You understand what I'm saying? So you you see you see that there, and you can even say, and uh, who uh, was declared to be the son of God, okay, uh, with power by the uh, resurrection uh, from uh, the dead, according to the spirit right according to the spirit and that's capital s it's very important there that the holy spirit raised of jesus what i'm the dead so you have the entire trinity in you know, having part in that anastasis and that resurrection of jesus this the holy spirit okay and i believe it, it mentions that also around verse 19 of chapter 3 of first peter okay and also and also, uh, the Father raised Jesus from the dead. I mean, you know, you have chapter 2 of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, Praxis Apostolon. And then you have uh, around uh, verse 19 of chapter 2 of uh, the Gospel Kata Ioannin, the Gospel according to John, where Jesus uh, raised himself from the dead. Okay? That's just the deal. Of course, he can do that because the Spirit of Jesus, okay, came out of his body, and that was in full control. Um you know, he went to a uh, shield to preach there, so he was very much alive. He wasn't dead. The spirit wasn't dead. Okay, remember that Hebrew word ara, which means to pour, to empty, um, you know, to bear, and to make naked, you know what I mean? You just look at Brown Driver and Briggs. Uh, the same Hebrew word ara that appears in verse 12, uh, the verse that, that the JWs like to use of chapter 53 of Isaiah is used also by uh, Moses by inspiration in verse 20 of chapter 24 of Genesis that Rebekah poured. It's the same Hebrew word ara, uh, the water from the, uh, from the uh, bucket, you know, poured out. Uh, from the bucket, the, the 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 water for the camels to drink. Well, the water wasn't destroyed when it was poured out. You could just tell the witnesses that. Is that what I'm saying? That's it. But anyway, um, that's you know, nature uh, one and nature two are here in verses uh, three and four. Nature uh, uh, one is actually in reverse. Nature uh, 
uh, 1 is in verse 4, and nature uh, 2 is in verse 3. Nature A is in verse um, uh, 4, and nature B is in verse 3. You understand what I mean? That's the sort of reverse over here. Reverse order. Now, let's see about the two natures of Christ again. Okay, so let's see Revelation. That's kind of easy to go to, right? Revelation chapter, and I believe it's chapter 22, verse 16, but we'll look, we'll look at it. All right? Revelation chapter uh, 22, verse 16. Remember, there's five, at least five persons speaking in this chapter. It's very d nicely delineated in the NIV, which Mark from Missouri likes, by the way, the JW from Missouri, a Republican state. Uh, so the thing is, that's just the deal. So, I mean, you know, you have the, the bride and the groom say, come, right? Um, bride and the groom say, come. You have, um, you know, the, the angel speaking, John speaking, and Jesus speaking. Now, the groom, if the groom is, is Jesus, well, then there's four persons speaking there, right? I have sent the angel, says um in uh, in this chapter, in this chapter, let me see. I Jesus have sent. That's in the perfect tense, I believe. Has sent my angel. See, has sent my angel. It's not that I'm the angel. It sent the angel. Okay. I think pempo is the Greek word over there. We'll look at it. we can look at it in another study of that. You know, so I'll keep you uh, waiting for that uh, study of, of this of this text. But you see over here, a nature one and nature two. I sent my angel uh, to testify, okay, to you these things. Testify to you these things for the uh, churches. That's in the plural in the Greek, no doubt. I am the root. There you go, nature one. And the, os and the, the offspring, says another translation, but the descendant, okay, of David. The bright morning star it doesn't say morning star it says a bright morning star this idea that the the other call i'm going to deal with uh, the king james only call says well you know the niv and nav says the 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 the, the morning star this is the morning star over here the bright and morning star it's just saying morning star it says bright morning so it's an adjective over here and so i'm saying and even if it did so what and satan is called the lion and jesus is called the lion right Roaring lion, and then uh, the lion of the tribe of, the tribe of Judah is the same one. Well, then you have an issue with, uh, you know, Peter, and then an issue with, um, you know, uh, Jesus being called the lion of the tribe of Ju Judah by any other writer of the of the of, of the of the two testaments. But that's nature one and nature two in a nutshell. Now. Let's look at the Greek, though, over there, okay? Let me look at the Greek. Let me give you the Greek words. I know Genos is one. I think um, I think uh, uh, Hriza is the other one for root. But let me just make sure. Hriza and Genos. But let me, I haven't looked at it in a long time. All right, so let's, uh, let's look at that, the last chapter, right? So you could be familiar with these Greek words. Okay. Let me see here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could just be in the vicinity, and then I'll, I'll do the rest, you know. Okay, I'll do the rest. <laughs> I'm poke the bear. Uh, hey, verse 16. It says, uh, ego. Okay, that's, uh, of course, I. That's a first-person personal pronoun from the ego uh, paradigm. Ego mu moi me. Ego means I. Uh, mu means it could be I or, or my. And then, uh, uh, moi, you can have a to, you know, to me, like that. And then, me means me. Okay? So, that's just the deal. Jesus, Jesus, that's in the nominative case construction. And by the way, it doesn't have an article. This is not, you know, you know I, a Jesus. Or I, one of several Jesuses. It doesn't, see, it doesn't have an article here. Sometimes, you know, it's, but it's definite. Huh? There's no ha there, it'll be ha, because it's an anonymous case, you know, Jesus, in flex, you know, three different ways, right? Um, you know, Jesus, Yesu, Yesu, and Yesun. I mean, so, you know, Yesu is shared by two cases, the dative and the genitive. You understand what I'm saying? The dative has to do with interest, and uh, the genitive case has to do with, you know, definition, description, or attribution. You understand what I'm saying? There's no article here. It doesn't mean a Jesus, just because it doesn't have ha. Ego, Yesus. 
Okay, now this is the word for half cent. Okay, all right. A pemso, a pemsa, a pemsa. Okay, a pemsa. E p e m p s a. Do they spell it like that? Yep. So epsilon with the soft breathing marker. So it's not he like in the word hen, which means one, but it's e like in the word n, a preposition. P. That's the P. Looks like a Greek temple. So if you're looking at something that looks like a stool, I call it like a stool, you're looking at a P. Then you have the E, Epsilon, and then you have the Mu, sometimes pronounced Mu. Nowadays it's called Me, but just stay with Mu or Mu. Then Psi, it's like an anchor. It's not an anchor, though, like on a ship. But it's actually a weapon of the false god Poseidon, the trident. You see that second letter there in a pemsa, the Greek uh, a version of it, not the English, of course. Before the A or the Alpha, that's that's the, the weapon of Poseidon there. That's uh that's uh, the god, the false god of the sea, Poseidon. That's why it looks like a trident. That's his weapon, and so that's a C. That's a PS. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Then you have the Alpha there. So a pemsa, uh, the ton. That's an accusative case construction, accusative uh, masculine singular. And then, well, the upcoming word also is going to be in the uh, accusative masculine singular, angelon, you see, because he's the object, he's the object of, um, he's, he, he sent the angel, so he's the object of the verb, right? The angel is, angelon, right? Alpha, gamma, gamma. Epsilon, Lambda, Omicron, Nu. I'm right below the word angel to the left-hand side. Now, there's two looking, there's two, there's two letters that looks like Y, that look like Y's, but they're not Y's, they're Gamma's. They're, in this situation, is a G. Um, the second one is to pronounce, to be pronounced with a G sound, but the first one, in this situation, when you have two, you know, um, back-to-back, uh, gammas, the first one is to be pronounced with an N sound, and then the second one is with a G sound, angelon. You don't say agelon. You don't say it with a, the, the two G sounds. The, it's, a, it's a gamma nasal. The first one, it turns into an N sound. So angelon, right? Angelon. Angelon. Three syllables here. Angelon. Angelon. Angelan, okay, angel. I sent the angel. Incidentally, I want to mention something about a manuscript, and I forgot the the, the manuscript uh, uh, designation. But there is um, there is a manuscript according to this book, John's Gospel, uh, chapter seventeen, verse three, the famous you know uh, verse that the witnesses like to use. There is, and, and I think it's in like the last part where this is like an extra ending, extra part to it. And it's incomplete. This, this pempo word is incomplete. I think it's pempo in the, in the, in the present. It's, um, it's incomplete there in the text. And I was wondering what that word was. And it's the only one on the page of um, uh, Greek New Testament manuscripts by Reuben Swanson, edited by Reuben Swanson and forwarded by the great Greek scholar Bruce and Mesker. I mean, so you have um, a whole bunch of lines of different manuscripts on the page in Greek. And so this was here, not maybe this constru construction, but um, because I don't have the text in front of me, that's back in New York. If my brother has that, you know, and held it for me, you know what I mean? Um, saved it for me, stored it for me. It, it just was broken up in that manuscript, and I was guessing. What? Wait a minute. I mean, the other ones is a, all these are different Greek words, and what is this? And I pieced it together. When I looked at this, I said, "Wait a minute. That's Pempo over there. That's Pempo. You know, they sent him into the world. That's the ending of that particular manuscript. That you know um, says uh, the Father is the only true God." Um, he, he sent me into the world that it's something like that the uh, the father is the true god and jesus christ um and jesus christ whom thou hast sent and then the extra ending is into i think it's like 
sent into the world or something like that. He has sent, uh, who he has sent into the world. So maybe has sent uh, is is part of the original, but but you know what I mean. It's an extra ending. What I'm trying to say anyway. So that this word probably wasn't tagged along with that. I got to look at the Greek of that, and I could look at it uh, after this. As a matter of fact, it's just because I think maybe it, it is part of the you know um, you know uh, the uh, you know part of the the Greek text that we have now, meaning temple. But anyway, I'll, I'll look at it. But we're looking at nature one and nature two, so that's just the deal. So let's just go on. Let's just continue though. So it says ego ego yes ego Jesus. Uh, and let me see. Ego Jesus uh a pencil and that's and that's uh in the Aris tense have sent and I believe the epsilon is an augment. Okay, that's an augment there, right? Right before the consonant P. So that's that's like an E D in English, but it is in the beginning of the word, okay. Aris active indicative. It's a verb, though. And then, and then I already said ton angelon, which are both, those two words are both in the accusative masculine singular construction. The full paradigm for, or at least the, the, the singular, the, the part that's, that's, that has the, uh, the, um, the singular will be uh, Angalas, Angalu, Angalo, and Angalan. And then you have your Angaloi, Angalon, Angalois, Angalus, you know, like that, for the plural, for angel. Uh, of me, and that's Mu, that's in the genitive, of me. That's uh, the genitive of possession there. To testify, uh, to testify, and that's... Um, Marture, mature sai, and that's uh, get martyr out of that, right? I think you get the word martyr out of that. To testify, all right, to testify to you who mean, we saw that in our text of uh, chapter 14, verse verse 28 of John, these things, panta or, or uh, tuta from the... Um, from the hutas uh, uh, paradigm, you know, hutas. And then it'll be, uh, uh, and then it'll be like, a, you know, to do, to do, and to, like that, I guess, right? I haven't seen that paradigm in a while. Um, and then you have uh, epi as a preposition. And then um, uh, tais. That's that's uh that's uh feminine ties there article. That's a feminine article there. Um the so feminine word is coming up churches okay um ecclesia right the churches is in a plural by the way uh ego and I I am ego Amy, okay, famous ego Amy there. The and that's a feminine article. Uh, hey, nowadays um, nowadays pronounce e. Like in certain countries, uh, certain countries in the world, they'll say e if it's a feminine, uh, gender country. You know, the gr you know grammatically speaking, you know what I'm saying. Root, okay, and that's, uh, there you go, Hriza was right, so that's spelled out, Hro, and, uh, well, actually, Riza, though, yeah, Hro, and, um, but just, um, it's like, uh, the transliteration is R-H-I-Z-A, but in Greek, it's actually, um, Hro, Iota, Zeta, and then Alpha, okay, four different Greek uh, letters, okay, so you got R-H-I-Z-A is a transliteration, so that's the root, and Greek word chi, compulative connective, conjunction, right, um, genos, gamma, epsilon with the acute marker, 
new Omicron Sigma. And I know nowadays the, the new is a knee and Omicron is an Omicron. I already know that the offspring and then of David and then uh, that's Dawid uh, that doesn't inflect. Okay. It's the same for the nominative. So, um, you know, it's like uh, David uh, and David uh, it begot David and David begot, you know, it doesn't inflect. This is the same for the accusative for the nominative. It's the same thing. But anyway, the triangle-shaped uh, letter is a D in Greek, capital D, okay? And then you have the A-U-I-D, so it's kind of easy. It's just a, and, and, uh, and then it goes on to say the bright morning star, uh, the ha um, bright, and that's uh, lampras. We get lampara from that, or lamp. Lampara in Spanish, lamp in English. It comes from this Greek word, okay? Lampras. We get lamp out of that. It really get it from, you know, like almost to the fullest degree in Spanish. Lampara. You see, lampara. But anyway, that's uh, Lambda, Alpha, Mu, Pi, Rho, Omicron, uh, and Final Sigma. Okay, L so it's Lam. You have to break up the M and the, and the P. Lam, Pras. Actually, uh, it's Lam, Pras. Lam, Pras. And then uh, the, 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 morning. Okay, and that's, um... Uh, and that's the Darius is there. You see that? There it goes, right there. Um, proina, proinas, proinas, not proinas, right? But proinas. That's the Darius. You see those two dots, and right below morning. You see those two dots right above the I or the iota. That's telling me that there's this 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 to be pronounced separately and not blended together. O I like like an oil. But that's to be pronounced O E. Okay. Pro Inas. Pro ina Pro Inas. Pro Inas. Okay, anyway, so that's nature one and nature two. Now let's look at again, because this is pointing for our argument. We're trying to see how is the father greater than Jesus. This is how. The nature, we can't say nature because the Father doesn't have two natures, like I said before. The nature of the Father, which uh, the Son has, but the nature of the Father is greater than nature too of Jesus. Because again, the Scripture says, and the Scripture cannot be broken, that God is greater than man. So if God is greater than man, well, then that's the deal. Also, He is greater. Um, the servant is not above his Lord, Jesus said to the disciples. Jesus is the servant of the branch. My servant, the branch. He's, he's, he's the servant of his Father God. So that's why he's greater also. Because he came to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what he came to do. So that's why uh, he's greater in, in, in those two um, senses. And and maybe many more but it doesn't have to do with you know the inferiority so-called of the jehovah's witnesses of uh, uh, that, that the jehovah's witnesses put upon jesus that he's not god no he's the servant of god he's he's the son of god he's the man christ jesus there's one mediator between god and man the man christ jesus anthropos the man christ jesus you know what i'm saying so in that sense and in only that sense okay and other things are under the umbrella, but in only that sense, under that heading, is the Father greater than Jesus. It has to do with the nature of the Father and the nature too of the Son. Okay? That's just it. I'm proving it here. I already proved it in Romans chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, where you see our nature uh, B and nature uh, A, or nature 2 and nature 1. And then you see it here. As you see, nature one in display first, and nature two in in, in the second display. Riza and uh, 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 Genas of Dawid. You know what I'm saying? Now let's go to um. All right, let's go to Second Corinthians. 
Okay, chapter 8, verse 9, where you see, and then the royal one is Philippians chapter 2, verse 6, where you can see my study on that in full detail. I mean, that's, that's a coup de grace. I mean, you know, Hasan Marfete Uhu Parcon, who being in the form of God, right, and then taking uh, the form of a, a Dulu, you know, Labon, uh, 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 Marfain, uh, this time in the accusative, you know, Dulu of, of, of a servant or bond servant or slave. Two different, two different participles there. And they're pre present active participles. That means that he's still God at the writing uh, of the Apostle Paul. And he's still man, for those who do not believe that he has a body now, at the time of the Apostle Paul. Those are two present active participles taking the form of, of, of Dulu. He's still taking it now. You know what I'm saying? Still has it. He has it. Now, every eye shall see him and every tongue cup shall confess. Now, 2 Corinthians, you understand what I'm saying? It says over here, <laughs> it's delicious. It's beautiful when you have the scriptures, you know what I mean? And that's just it. Well, let's go to verse 9, which comes goes before verse 10. Went before verse 10. I don't know my English here in the Philippines. I forgot it. Hey, right, so this is just a deal. So it says over here, you know, it says over here, you know. It has a capital uh, 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 gamma there. Okay, geno, it says over here, using the magnifying glass, remember, geno skete, geno skete. You know, geno skete, that's a, uh, uh, that's a, in second person, the te is the second person. Um, that epsilon before the tau there it might be a connecting vowel there. For, okay, a Greek word gar. I have something over here. It says I don't want to um, always and just put press cancel because last time I pressed the wrong button and it canceled the whole thing. And Greek word gar um, for the and that's tain. Oh, that's a, a feminine article, okay. Tontain ta. Remember tontain ta. Ta with a a a a a amicron. That's the singular uh, sort of accusative line, if you will, of the paradigm. Uh, grace. Okay. Charim. So that's an accusative case. So so grace is is in, is a feminine word. Of the nasto from tu te tu. You know that side of the genitive. Um, the 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 genitive side of the paradigm. Lord, okay, Kurio, uh, and that's in the genitive of us, and that's uh, Hamon. The same, um, I think the same, this same word, uh, Hamon, is used for the Trinity. Uh, let us use, um, let us uh, make man in our image. Well, I think our there is Hamon there in uh, the Greek Septuagint, a uh, verse. Uh, 26 of chapter 1 of Genesis, but I have to look at that at another time. But I think Hamon is there. But anyway, um, Jesus, and there's no article there in front of Jesus, so as you know, the form of a Jesus, you know, the, the of us, a Jesus. Does it say that? No. Yes, so. Now, uh, let me look at this again. It says, uh, the grace of uh, it says the Lord Jesus. Now, that would be in a genitive case because the article 2 is in front of curio. So curio is in a genitive. So yesu has to be in a genitive. That's kind of tricky. It looks like in a dative, right? Because it shares the both cases. But oh, there's indicators and clues in the, in the clause. And then it goes on to say, okay, all right, um... Christ, and that'll be Christu, right? See, there you go, Christu. Okay, he, ro, k, yoda, sigma, tau, omicron, upsilon, praise the Lord, he gets the glory, not me. That, hati, and we saw that like twice in our chapter, chapter uh, tw uh, 14, verse 28 of John. For the sake, okay, d, okay, from dia, it's just they just uh, put the apostrophe because. And I'm not gonna look at it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to remember. It's very hard to remember everything in Greek, because I bet you that. And I'm just looking at the the di, 
that some vowel is coming up next. That's why they dropped the alpha and dia. Okay, so let me see. You see, that's how you retrain yourself to 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 to, to keep on. You know what I'm saying? Hope I don't make a fool out of myself. Yeah, see, upsilon. You see, you. Uh, now, does that um, sake of you? See, so they just say drop the alpha, and then and then I put the apostrophe because the upsilon is coming up in humas. And that's an accusative humas. You know the paradigm humes. Uh, um, what's the paradigm? Humes, humon. Who mean humas? That's the paradigm there in the second person personal pronoun from the plural part of the paradigm. He became okay. Uh, it says epto. It says over here epto. Husen. He became. You see, poor. Okay. Now remember, a plusias is coming up soon. He became uh, poor. And then Plusias is here. Plusias, rich uh, being, meaning he was rich, being on. Okay, that's a, uh, that's a, uh, a, a, a participle, right? On. And then, um, so that, okay, Hina, you, who may, and that's in the, the nominative, who may, uh, te through that okay ekenu through that okay so that's from ekenas though that's a ekenas um um means that and hutas means this right so this is an genitive so I mean, ekenas ekenu ekeno like you like you know you know like uh kenan it's just the different constructions. Uh, poverty, and that's, um, and that's pito, pito, pitochea, poverty, okay, and that's in the dative case, though, the, the iota is right below the alpha, that's in the dative, that happens, that's an improper diphthong, that happens like in, you know, under three vowels, this one, alpha, omega, and eta, like in the word arche, you know, that's under, under there, the eta, the little tiny i, you know, that's an indicator, that you're in the dative. But be careful with that, though. That's not all the time that's the case. No pun intended. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so, um, might be, uh, enriched. Uh, you have chicken over there, Godfrey, in the, in the, in the, you know that, the plastic thing like that? There's chicken in there. Go get that, eat that. Okay, wash your hands first. Brush your teeth first, okay? My stepson got up. And that's a sub, that should be a subjunctive, okay? I, got, I think the hina uh, is the clue for the subjunctive here. Hina, right? That's the clue. Um, I lost my place. Might be... Uh, and, and by the way, John 3.16 has a subjunctive, Okay. So this idea of the King James only advocates that it might or may or whatever it was there in 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 uh in a John chapter three verse sixteen that's a substantive, so you have to use those words. Now, if you believe, uh, you, well, you, you know, you you're going to be saved. But it has to be correct English to say to translate it might or whatever the case may be. He's washing his hands, you know, Godfrey. Uh, brush your teeth, Godfrey. Okay. Might be uh might be enriched okay and uh, the eta there I think is pointing out the subjunctive there in this in this in this word okay uh plute plute sete okay so that's just so that's just it okay again rich is nature one pa. It's nature too. So he had two natures. So he who was rich became poor, you see? And that became, reminds me of a genital in verse uh, 14, where it says, um, And the word became a kai ha lagas a genital or genital sex. 
Okay, flesh. You see? You see that he became flesh. He wasn't flesh all the time. Continuously so. He took upon himself an additional nature. That's why he's the God-man now. Jesus is God and man. Enabling him, meaning the second nature, to be crucified for our sins and transgressions. They were contrary to the law. The law given through God through Moshe. You understand what I'm saying? By God through Moses, I should say. All right, so um, so that's what, so we had uh, na nature one and nature two in Philippians chapter two verses uh, six and seven, and uh, I mean you know Revelation chapter uh, twenty two verse sixteen, praise God He gets the glory not me, and then uh, this one verse uh, nine of chapter eight of Second Corinthians. You see all these little little indicators, great great indicators, not really little, and in Romans chapter one verses three and four, which has the order in reverse. Okay, B and A, or uh, 2 uh, and uh, 1. You know what I'm saying? And the rest of this is the, the order is the way it is. Okay, all right. Um, you know, uh, 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 nature A and nature B, or nature 1 and nature 2. Okay, so that's how he is greater uh, than Jesus, according to Jesus' second nature, and not his first nature. Okay. Because God can be greater than God, right? But he can be greater, okay, than the God, man. This is Angelo Quinones giving the glory. To God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit, okay? Now, before I get out of here, though, let me let me look at uh, Philippians chapter uh, 2, verses um, 6 and 7, okay? Because, you know, I have to look at it, though. And there are other verses where the two natures are in play. You understand what I mean? All right, good. Philippians chapter 2. Godfrey, are you brushing your teeth with that water? Godfrey. Are you, what are you doing? You're brushing your teeth with that water? Not with that water, Godfrey. Oh, okay. Because, you know, that, that water that's water that water's from the well, so we cannot drink that water, you know, here in the Philippines. You understand what I'm saying? So brush your teeth. Come on, get water in the cup. And you got water in the cup already? You brush your teeth? Okay, so there's chicken in the plastic thing. Bring the plastic thing to me so I know that you're looking at it. Good. Hurry up because I'm doing a Bible study. Come on, Godfrey. Sorry about that. I apologize, guys. Good. Very strong with him because I want him to be a good boy when he grows up. Right. There's chicken in there. So get that and get juice, okay? And say thanks to God. Okay. Now, I just said, that have to be, you know, with these, with these kids. They'll eat you alive, <laughs> especially stuff kids, you know? Thank God he's only, you know, eight. I, 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 you know, so. All right. So anyway, um, it says over here, Has and Marfe, and that's in the dates of Marfe, um, Theu, um, Huparcon, and that's existing, but it's really subsisting, though. I hate the word existing, just like R.C. Sproul hated that word for, for God. For any of the members of the Trinity, you you see it being used. If God exists, you know, and and, 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 and uh, that's probably God overall, or God the Father. I don't know, but you see that for for all of the members of the Trinity, you know, um, it, we say it like that, but it's really wrong for God. It's not really exists. It's subsists. He subsists. He depends on nothing. It's not like it's not like like the Latin word uh, that um, R.C. Sproul was getting into X ray that that you know it's like, you know, he had you know he stepped out. Uh, he, you know, he stepped into time or something like that. He had a beginning. You have to be careful what exists. I mean, it's just, it's not a perfect word for God, any of the members. Okay? So, I'm just saying, subsist, uh, some, um, you know, some uh, Greek interlinears, I have to check the Alfred Marshall, which is very superior. I mean, you know, it's, it has that. Or uh, the, the, the KJV Greek interlinear by... Um, is it George Riker Berry or uh, I forgot his name, but I mean, it might be George Riker Berry. I mean, you know, but I forgot his name. I haven't looked at it in a long time. But anyway, uh, subsisting is really the Greek here. Subsisting. Okay. Hoop means under. And then you know the deal. But anyway, now, silver and gold have I none. Have is, the, is this word right over here. Okay. It's not in that. It's not in, you know. I don't think it's in the participial construction, but that's the same word that we're talking about, you know. Silver and gold have I none. You know what I'm saying? That's chapter 3. 
You understand what I'm saying? In, in the Praxis Apostolon, the Acts of the Apostles. That's the word here. Serve and go have I none. Have. So anyway, uh, so that's just the deal. So Huparkon is one of my favorite words in the Bible. It's spelled out uh, Upsilon with the rough breathing marker. Uh, P, Alpha with the acute marker. Rho, Chi, Omega, and Nu. Huparkon means that Jesus, ex well, I hate to say the word, but existed or subsisted. It's not even an arson, it's subsisting. It's not only that he subsisted, but this is a part, it's not an arrow's tense. This is a participial construction on here, Omega and Nu. He is God at the time of the writing of this text by the Apostle Paul, direct by direct inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is is God now, right now. Uh, and then it says not, you know, uh, you know, and then uh, the Mark from Missouri said that that uh, you know, and he says uch <laughs> like kuchi kuchi ku, you know. <laughs> Mark from Missouri, J W. I love him though, but man, my goodness, I mean, he needs to brush up on his Greek. I mean, you know, we all need help, you know. But uch uh, uch. Go on, man. I, I see how he's do why he's doing it because you see you see the transliteration O U C H, but he's going by the transliteration. Can't go by that though. Okay, ooh, it's not ooch like uchi kuchi ku. You know what I'm saying? Not like that. And it says, uh, you know, Esau, that's equalities according to Vine's complete expository dictionary of all the New Testament words that that, that Jesus was equal to God the Father, equal equalities. See, he emptied some aspect of glory that he gets back when he prays for it in the high priestly prayer. And that's just the deal. Right? Father, give me the glory, the glory that I had with you before the foundation of the world. You see? And he does. He gives him the glory that he had. Okay, that was the deal. That's the, that's the bargain. That, you know, I do this and you do that. You understand what I'm saying? I honor you by obeying you to the fullest uh, degree, and I get the glory back. That's the bargain. That's the deal. And so he did. So the thing is that, um, and, and then you, you, you just to skip all this because the thing is that you know time is of the essence. <clears throat> and so the hupar calm means subsisting in the form of God, right? Marfe means of form, and atheo means of God, right? There, and then. And then it says over here, you understand, but uh, himself, it says over here, himself, okay, it says emptied, you see, emptied, okay, the form, okay, so that's a uh, marfane, that's the object of the verb, right, marfane, that's in the, in the case of the case construction, the new is telling me that, okay, marfane. Of a servant, and that's an agenitive, of course, dulu, okay, of a servant, dulu. And then the participle is coming up, labon, where is it? Having, uh, having taken it, okay, and that's labon, that's a labon. Godfrey, did you eat all the chicken? Okay, sweetheart, get, get a lot of juice, okay, because you know you play a lot. That over here is an aorist participle, okay, active, okay? So, I mean, so this is a participial construction, and aorist and active. So he's the one taking it. He wasn't uh, uh, given that uh, nature um and then he had nothing to do with it no he he had a lot to do with it okay you know what i'm saying that, that's why he's not a creature because he had part and he had role in the body his birthday suit is angelo quinone is giving glory to god the father to the lord jesus christ and in the holy spirit god is not the god of the dead but of the living and that means that abraham isaac and jacob are still alive right now and that means that the tower the jehovah's witnesses the witnesses 
were lying right to your face when they said that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or oh, that, you know, uh, it doesn't have to doesn't correspond with each other, but anyway, that's just what I'm trying to say. Uh, turning the page, then <laughs> Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were going to return. They didn't return. You see, you have to be careful with, with, with some so called uh, 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 churches. Jehovah's Witness Church, is, 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 they don't call themselves a church, they call themselves a congregation, the Watchtower. So Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob were going to return, and, and you know, they never did. And Rutherford, Joseph Franklin Rutherford, being one of the lawyers of, uh, not really being, but who was one of the uh, lawyers of uh, Charles Chase Russell because he was dead. He died on the train, you know what I'm saying? Um, he, uh, he said, Rutherford said that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were going to return. In that book entitled, Millions Now Living Will Never Die and They're Almost All Dead. And if they're not, they're hanging by a thread. You understand? So they said. They said. That, he said that they were going to return. They never returned. So they, you know, they made a mansion. Beth Sarim. Beth means house. Sarim means uh, princess. Is in the plural because of the mem in in Hebrew. You understand? It's like Susim, Cherubim, uh, Panim, and all that other stuff. Elohim. And so the thing is that um, you know, Seraphim. You know. And so the thing is that um, so he he died in that mansion. You know, Beth Sarim, you know, and then they hid the selling of the of the mansion and stuff like that. I think it was in California, and that's just a deal. And they never came, so you can't trust such a group that says that the prophet of God in 1972, even though that was way before that, what I just was what I was just talking about, 1972, and they said that the prophet of God in 1972 on April Fool's Day. <laughs> Was a bit of fool to believe that, and then they get everything wrong. You know, three years later, you know, in a supposed return of Christ, they get it wrong. So they said that the prophet of God in 1972, and in 1975 he didn't even come back. Now Jesus is going to come back on his own time, which nobody knows. This is Angelo Quinones again giving glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. Okay, guys, don't forget to subscribe, uh, hit that like button, and also please, more importantly than all of that, please give a comment. I'll leave your comment on the screen. Now, remember, I'm in the Philippines, so you can't call me directly, but you can call me on Facebook Messenger and uh, just see me on Angelo Kiki Quinones on Facebook, A-N-G-E-L-O space K-Y-K-Y space Quinones, Q-U-I-N-O-N-E-S, and hit me on Messenger, and uh, we can talk freely there if you have any questions. Uh, this is I Am Ministries, and um, I'm the founder of I Am Ministries, uh, Angelo Quinones, and you just take really, really good care of yourself during this pandemic and time. Thanks.